This week in buys and sports, we talk buys in football. It was that time of the year, the 2016 CFL draft just happened. We had four Bisons uh, drafted. One, I don't know where he's gallivanting right now. It might be in New Orleans for all we know. I think he's there, David Onyemata. Of course he's there. He got drafted in the NFL. He got also drafted in the CFL, Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the, at the end of the fourth round. But we uh, have three of the four who are here who are uh, ready to go. They, they heard their name announced on, uh, uh, well, boy, I believe it was May 10th, I think, of all things. I think that's where it was on Tuesday. Uh, tell the vast listening audience on 101.5 UMFM your name, your position, uh, where you were drafted, if you can remember that, and what team? My name's Alex Vitt. I am a slot back slash receiver, and I got drafted by Winnipeg. Do you remember what the, the round and, and the number by any chance? 55th overall. I think that was seventh round. You are correct. That's good. Well done. DJ the Llama, linebacker, uh, Edmonton Eskimos, and number 70. Number seven, that's right. You were, you were uh, the last pick yep. in the yep. eighth round, which is fantastic. Good for you. Alex McKay, offensive line, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And do you remember? Yes, I do. I was the 52nd pick in the sixth round. There you go. These guys have won the first, you know, uh, the quiz of the day, which is a good thing. So let's go around the horn here. Uh, Vit, you, Mr. Alex Vit, you had an interesting thing. You were right here, if I'm not mistaken, when you were watching and and uh, getting the phone call that you uh, got drafted. Yeah, for sure. I was just sitting on those couches over there, uh, me and a couple other guys. Um, it wasn't showing on the TV anymore, so we just all had our laptops out, and the name finally popped up, and we uh, started celebrating. Before we get to the other guys about what, where they were when, when they heard their names, uh, you, you, let's be honest, you're, you were one that was on a little bit of a bubble, right? There was eight rounds and stuff. People had, had talked about you. You didn't go to the, to the main combine, but there was a lot of talk about sort of where you were. Did you have any in indication that Winnipeg was a team that was looking for you? Coach Doby had told me in the weeks leading up to the draft that maybe Winnipeg, Kyle, Kyle Walters had some interest in me as maybe a developmental or special teams player. So it wasn't completely out of left field, but I hadn't talked to them the day before I had been drafted or anything. So it's a pleasant surprise, absolutely. Nice. You, my sir, uh, DJ LaLama, you were not in Winnipeg. Where were you? And talk about the reaction when, uh, when you found out that you were getting drafted by Edmonton. Uh, I was in St. Catharines, Ontario with my whole family. My grandma's 85th as well, so kind of, you know, multi-celebration multi that night. But, uh, you know, it was a long wait. Um, but, when it, you know, when I got that phone call from Edmonton, I'm just excited uh, going to the Grey Cup champs. And, you know, I, you know, just excited to get after it. We'll, we'll come back to your story in a second. Alex McKay. You again, also, I'll be honest, right? You're a bit of a bubble guy, a bit, uh, you know, you, you knew what you could do, but someone has to kind of draft it there. Talk about where you were watching the, the draft and, and were you surprised it was Saskatchewan? I was in my mother's living room. Uh, yeah, you know what? I had a lot of calls. I had a lot of interest. And I, I knew in my mind where I thought I should go and who was a possibility. But uh, Saskatchewan, I had not talked to them. Honestly, like it's a dream come true because I'm a proud Prairie boy, right? But I had not talked to Saskatchewan or Chris Jones whatsoever. But uh, as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw my name on the TV, phone blew up and immediately Chris Jones called me. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. There it is. It is kind of a cool thing when you hear your name. You know, this is what you guys kind of play for to get to the professional level here. It's it's fantastic. We're talking uh, uh, CFL draft uh, players: Alex Vitt, Alex McKay, and DJ Lalama. DJ, my man, let's like yeah. let's get to it. Let's get to the elephant in the room here, a bit, right? Let's be honest here. Yeah. You were, I think, projected to be maybe one of the top linebackers in this draft. I yeah. I've heard as, as high as three, let's say. There was eight rounds this year. There were yeah. 70 players picked. Yeah. It took to the 70th guy to get picked. Yeah. Uh, just and, and, and on top of that, you had gone to an NFL camp yeah. the, the week before. Yeah. But but just talk about that. I know there there's some emotion. I, I don't know if it's still raw for you, but I know you're fired up afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Does that you know? Uh, do you want to kind of now prove some teams wrong that kind of uh, did not pick you earlier in the draft? I mean, at the end of the day, you got 69 reasons to be motivated now. Um, and, you know, God has a plan. I'm fortunate to be going to the best team in the CFL, and it is what it is. Uh, for whatever reasons, uh, general managers across the league, uh, you know, shied away or, you know, picked other people in my position. And, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I've got the rest of my career to, to prove, you know, that they made mistakes. And, um, you know, Edmonton got a, a relentless guy that's going to go and you know make plays and do everything he can on on, on and off the field to uh, to make Edmonton proud. And 
that's what it is. It's not about, you know, when I go, it's about, you know, where, and I think I'm in a good situation, and I'm just excited to get to work. We'll come back to that in a second, all right? Alex Vitt, talk about, uh, you're pretty pretty good here. You just uh, have to just go to the other direction now to get to the bomber dress room uh, to start your pro career. Yeah, for sure, it's great. I mean, I've been living in Winnipeg my whole life. Nothing really changes for me. Uh, I go down the elevator, I turn right instead of left, and, you know, I'm going to right next to a, uh, I got a lot of friends still on the Bison team, right? So being in the same stadium, I'll see I'll see the guys every day, right? It's a cool thing because you don't really have to change your routine too much. I mean, other than uh, you get a paycheck and 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 uh, you're going to wear some spiffy new uniforms mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. they just announced, which Absolutely. is fantastic. But uh, is it kind of a, a a dream sort of to be picked to by your home team? I mean, absolutely. I grew up watching these guys, right? So I'm not going to say I wouldn't have wanted to be picked anywhere else, but there's like back of your mind maybe hoping, you know, Winnipeg, it's your hometown, right? So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Alex McKay, you've been chomping at the bit. I'll tell you this: you have been, uh, you know, you've been on pins and needles for a while here, waiting to get your name picked here. Uh, I know you'd love the Winnipeg, but Saskatchewan's pretty good. You're going to be part of the the big rivalry with with the Bombers and stuff. Uh, just talk about just that. You know that all like because your story is that you didn't play football for until you were late in sort of development. Yeah, you know it was grade eleven, uh, and I mean I'd watched a little bit of football. Family were bomber fans. I've been to a bunch of games, but yeah, I'd never played. I played every sport but football. Grade eleven, high school team gets start up. Uh, and I'm, my name is the first on the list. We sell cookies, we sell cheese, we sell all that bullshit. We get a team set up, and then, uh, and then you know it just it just goes from there. And yeah, you you know as well as everybody. I was in Dobie's office every single week. Coach Dobie's office every single week, saying, "Hey, what am I? What are you hearing? What's happening?" And uh, so yeah. You know what, I like this. He pulled the David on your matter right there. He dropped the S-bomb, which is nice. Uh, only on 101.5 UMFM we can do it. We're going to have to edit that one out, but it's all good. McKay, you'll learn that in the pro level. You might want to clean it up a little bit, just that, a little that's, bit. That's allowed in Ryderville. Oh, in Ryderville, that's I don't allowed. know. I mean, that's, that's, that's all good that's here. Allowed. So let's touch base here. You also went to the NFL camp before the CFL draft, yeah. Uh, yeah. the Giants uh, rookie mini camp. Yeah. Talk about that experience. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, once in a lifetime, uh, that one kind of came as a surprise for me. I wasn't expecting it uh, by any means, but again, it's just about taking you know advantage of the opportunity. And uh, I got great foot feedback from you know Coach Bagnola and being able to work with him and work with other guys that you know went to Clemson, Alabama, uh, Ohio State. Um, just seeing the way they approach the game and you know what it means to be a professional, um, I think it just you know got me ready and geared up for CFL training camp. And you know hopefully I can bring a couple things that I learned down there up here, and you know hopefully that helps me out. That's that's very cool here. Lastly, we're talking uh, CFL draft as these guys are going to start their pro careers. Alex Vitt, Alex McKay, and uh, DJ Lalama. Uh, just kind of let's start with Alex here. Just your thoughts about you know what you got to do to get ready now as camp comes up at the end of the month. Well, you got to go in healthy. That's the number one thing. Are you healthy? I am healthy, yeah. I've been training, working on maintenance and all that. So um, you just got to go in healthy and with the right mindset. Um, you're going in as a rookie, so pretty much got to fill a role for the team. They draft you for a reason, and whatever they ask of me, you just have to be prepared to do it and do it to your best of ability. DJ Lama, you're going to the Grey Cup champions. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, their, their expectations are higher again yeah. going into this year. Yeah. You, you come in as rookie, what's your mindset? What do you need to do to get prepared for a start of training camp? Uh, you know, I think we've already been on that path. Um, I think, you know, ever since the season ended, we've all had this goal in mind, and I think we've prepared ourselves accordingly. Um, for me, it's just I got a big chip on my shoulder now. Um, you know, for me, it's I got something to prove. And, uh, you know, Edmonton gave me that opportunity and the door is a little bit open. Now it's time to kick it down and they're going to get the best me possible, um, whether that's special teams, defense, um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, they're going to get someone who's relentless in all they do. And that's what it is at the end of the day. I like to kick the door down. I like that. Alex McKay, what's your uh, mindset and, and where, where are you going to be to start camp uh, in, a, in a couple weeks? Well, I'm already healthy. I feel good. I feel like I've done all the right things. And like my, my life's been leading up to this moment. Like I, my friends were asking me, my family was asking me the same thing. You know, are, are you prepared? What do you expect? Are you gonna be at an element? Like, no, I could not be more prepared for this. Honestly, I, I could not be more prepared for this. So I'm gonna come in as a Canadian offensive lineman and whatever they tell me to do, I'm gonna do. There you go. And you know what, uh, family and friends, it's not that far of a drive to go see you. Oh, 
I'll take that six-hour drive every day. I'll come in every weekend if I want, you know. There you go. Before we go here, uh, you guys will be rookies, you know, on your first pro camp there. You think you'll, uh, you'll get a number or you, they'll just assign you a number? You know anything? Did you negotiate that, DJ Olama? Uh, I think that might have something to do with the Mr. Irrelevant. I might get to pick my number, but, uh, I mean, I got no idea. I mean, the number doesn't matter. It's it's the team that you're playing for. So go in, uh, you know, guns blazing, and just, you know, any way you can help with the team, whatever they give you, it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, you're playing as an Edmonton Eskimo now, so. Does it matter, Vit, what number they give you? No, I think DJ said it pretty well there. Um, whatever they give you, it doesn't matter. Same thing, Mr. McKay? You know, as long as I'm wearing that Rough Rider logo, I'm a, I'm a proud man. All right, here, I, I, I lied. I got one more question here. Yep. You're going. You got some former Bisons there. Eddie Steele, Donna Ramsion there. Yep. Uh, have they uh, spread some love to you uh, since you've joined up with the Eskimos? Yeah, lots of love. I know I'm carrying Donnie's helmet and pads for uh, for training camp. Lucky you. Yeah, yeah. He told me that at the gym this morning, so uh, that's a positive. I um, told him I'd give him some Snicker bars, too. That's his favorite. But, but it's a nice thing that you have a, uh, that connection sort of going uh, to it, uh, oh, you know. Yeah. I mean, most definitely. I mean, having a couple guys you can lean on for advice and make that transition to the pros a little bit easier. I mean, I think every Everyone would take that um, opportunity, and like I said, uh, those were two guys that you know dropped down in the draft themselves. Um, you know they were pegged to go a lot higher than they did, and obviously they're both in the league and have been for a long time. So being able to lean on those guys, uh, you know, use them as examples, and you know push each other. I mean, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, and they're they're both champions, right? right on exactly. both levels, yeah. right? Which is yep. pretty awesome yep. for you. Uh, where are you going? Uh, like uh, you have uh, Louis Richardson and Teague Sherman. Nice to have a couple of former Bisons on your team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I've seen Teague in here. I've, we've been training a little bit together. So he talked to me a bit through what to be expected, you know, going into the draft and then I guess going to training camp. So it's nice to actually know someone you played with in university level at the next level. So maybe you can lean on them a little bit. That's cool. And lastly, uh, Nick Dembski. Have you got some love from uh, from Nick uh, as you joined the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? I have. Tons of love from Nick. And you know what? Like Nick's an awesome dude. I'm pumped. He, uh, he should be. You, you might be carrying his stuff, too, just to let you know about that. A little bit about that. Alex McKay, Alex Vitt, and DJ Lalama. Congratulations on uh, getting to the uh, to professional level, being drafted in the 2016 CFL draft. All the best in Edmonton, Winnipeg, Saskatchewan. And you're listening to This Week in Bison Sports. You know where? 101.5 hey, UMFM. There you go.